Hi, and welcome to Living the Creative Life. I'm Linda Peterson, and I am so glad that you are joining me today because I've got a very special show playing for you today. Our show theme today is fashion. And I know when you think of fashion, you might be thinking of your clothes, but we're gonna take that to more of your accessories and how you can accessorize that with jewelry, with scarves, and really the possibilities are endless. So I thought it would be fun to go on a virtual fashion tour, virtual road trip. And to start off, I thought it'd be fun to have a little change of scenery. So right behind me is the Finley River. Now this is located in Ozark, Missouri, which is my hometown. It's a little town just uh, south of Springfield and north of Branson. And behind me is the old historic Ozark Mill that's been around since the turn of the century. So that's the setting for, or the basis where we're going to start our fashion tour because our first stop is Chicago, Illinois at the Summer CHA Show. We're gonna visit Juliana Hudgens. She was there working in the beetle on booth and she was making the coolest beads with wire. But you didn't know you can make a bead with wire, but she's gonna show you how. Then we're going to hop a virtual plane to a secret destination. But I will give you a little hint. I'll be using fabric markers, so where will I be? You'll just have to wait and find out. Then we're going to take a retro train back in time a little bit to the vintage era because vintage is so hot right now and I'm seeing vintage markets pop up everywhere. So I'm going to show you how to upcycle an old t-shirt and give it a vintage look with a vintage rose. You're going to love this project and it's super simple using the Aliens Fabric Fusion Peel and Stick Tape. So we've got a lot to do but you better get your bags packed so that you can hop on this fashion tour. First stop on our fashion tour is the Summer CHA Show in Chicago, Illinois. Now this is where the designers meet with the manufacturers and they showcase all of their talents and this year is no exception. They put together an amazing fashion show with mannequins using some really uncommon materials. So be sure to stay tuned for that little slideshow and that peak at the end of the show. But right now, we're going to head over to the Beetle on booth because Juliana Hudgens is there and she's showing everyone how to create a really cool, fun, and funky bead with artistic wire. So, please help me welcome my best creative friend, Juliana Hudgens. Hey there, it's Jules. I'm here at Shaw Summer and I'm in the Beetle on booth with my baby artistic wire. I'm so excited. I've been showing people how to make wire beads. I have a really cool one right here and a couple on my necklace. So what I have done is I already made a coil about five inches long. I'm using 22 gauge wire and look at how delicious it is. It's lemon, so that's also yellow, but it's more fun to say lemon. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a second color of wire and I'm just going to thread that wire onto the coil, let that fall, going to wrap it around the handle and then just make a really small coil. Next, I'm going to take the coil, slide that up, wrap it around, and now here comes the magic. I'm just going to feed that coil up onto the rod and I'm just snaking it. Isn't that cool? And you just want to make sure that all the coils are spreading open so that they're all nice and even. And then I'm going to finish it up. And there we have our bead. And then let me just take it off of the rod. And then we're just going to cut it, snip those tails off. Make sure you hold those so that they don't fly up into your eye. And then there you have it. Look at how beautiful. Now, the longer your coil, the more substantial and big your bead will be. And then the shorter your coil, the more 
short and voluptuous it will be. <laughs> so lots of fun. You know, uh, one thing that I really enjoy about the CHA show is the fact that usually at that time of the year, I'm kind of dry on ideas. And it's just that creative jolt. It's kind of like creative coffee. You know, when you drink coffee, you get that little jolt of energy. Well, it's kind of like that little jolt of creative energy that I get every year when I go to the show. Uh, my fellow designers are so inspiring. And then when you couple that with some great girl time, it just doesn't get any better than that. So thanks Juliana for sharing that wonderful project with us. Now I've got a little funny story I kind of want to share with you. So I was able to room, Julian, Juliana and I roomed together at this past summer CHA show. And just after she finished for the day working in the Beetle on booth, she had a class. So we were preparing for a class, which was actually a very similar technique to what she was showing during the day, but we added a little different twist. She added a really cute lime colored little dice but what she wanted is she wanted all these little Swarovski crystals glued all over it and it was just really really cool but if you know Juliana she's very precise very neat very particular and she does amazing work but my style is a little different with that so when it comes to gluing I prefer to think of my gluing as a little well let's just say it's artistically textural she would call it mexi I call it artistically textural. And because of that, she teases me that I failed adhesive application school. And you know what? We have laughed, or I have laughed about that for the longest time. And that's what I love about CHA is the girlfriends getting together and we can create really, really fun memories. So I just wanted to share that funny little story. So now you know, now you know why I paint with my fingers and I I just have to get into my work. What can I say? Well, now it's time if you got your bags packed because we need to hop on our virtual plane to my secret location and I wonder what am I going to be doing with the tulip fabric markers? Well, let's find out. I'm here at the Southern Women's Show in Charlotte, North Carolina at the I Love to Create booth and we are having so much fun with all the women here and we're decorating these gorgeous, gorgeous scarves with tulip fabric markers. This is a great project if you have girlfriends or if you have kids and I can't wait to show you what we're doing right now. So we're working today on a silk scarf and this one here is about 18 inches long so it's obviously not long enough to go around your neck but it is long enough to tie around your wrist or maybe a handbag or maybe even make it into a keychain but it's silk and this is just a beautiful um, fabric to work with. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to have some sort of cushy work surface. So at the show here, I'm working on a stack of placemats, and these are kind of cushy. And I have some T-pins here, which I've just secured my um, scarf down, and that holds the fabric in place while I draw on it. At home, you may have a piece of craft foam or maybe even a piece of foam board, and you may have some tape. You can tape this certainly down to your work surface, but you want to make sure that you protect the underneath because sometimes the markers can soak in. I'm using the Tulip brand of fabric markers, and these are the um, fine tip markers. I'm also going to use the broad tip markers, the Tulip brand of broad tip markers. You're going to notice that these are double ended and that this end here is the broad tip and this end, this thicker end, is the brush tip. And that's the tip that I like to use because it just goes on the fabric, or especially on the silk, uh, nicer. Now, the only thing different, these are made to draw lines and to stay there, but sometimes, just so you know, it runs a little bit when you're using the silk. So if you don't have resist, you will get some kind of runny lines, and that's great because that really adds uh, some personality to the project itself. And you can see that I've already started. I've drawn some lines, uh, some thinner black lines and some thicker red lines. So if you can draw lines and circle shapes, this is a great project for you. So let, let me just continue on just to show you how easy these are to mark on the fabric. So I'm just gonna draw some kind of random round-ish shapes. Kind of gives you a little giraffe pattern. And then 
we're gonna fill them in with some red. Okay. See how quick and easy this is? Are you thinking now all the different projects you could use this technique on? Maybe you want to get together with your girlfriends and have a girls night in, share a craft project, share some laughs, share some dessert. This would also be a great project for your kids, kids parties. So just kind of haphazardly fill that in and then just to add a little extra salt and something, I'm just going to put a little dot there. I didn't even realize. But you're actually going to do the um, entire um, scarf. Here's one that I've already finished, and you can see it's just got some zebra print, and I've added some red, and here's my giraffe print, but it's all ready to be tied around my wrist. So I want you to take a look at some of the other cool designs that our ladies from the Southern Women Show have created. One of the things I'm going to take away from the Southern Women Show is the ability that I had to connect with all of you amazing ladies that attended the show. It was so much fun for me to talk with you and get to know you and learn about you, learn about your life experiences and your, your successes and your challenges and, and just to spend some creative time together. It was really it really meant a lot that you shared your time with Tiffany and, and I. I know I can speak for Tiffany on this because it was, it was an amazing experience. We loved seeing how excited you were when you finished the projects. We loved, especially when you said, no, nah, it's okay, I don't, want, I don't want to do that. I don't have a creative bone in my body. But then when you saw how easy it was and you said, I can do this, and you were excited about it, we loved sharing our passion of crafts with you. And we also loved when we saw, we saw moms and daughters and, and grandmas and great grandmas all connecting and sharing just a very close, special bond. So I just wanna say thank you to the women in Char Charlotte, North Carolina for visiting us. Thank you to I Love to Create and thank you Southern Women Show for allowing me to be part of such a wonderful experience and uh, giving me a lot of wonderful memories. Well now we're going to hop that virtual train I was talking about and we're going to go back in time just a little bit, well, sort of, with a little stretch of the imagination. And what I mean is, in my travels I have noticed that there are so many vintage markets popping up. They're, they're popping up everywhere. And it's not just about handmade vintage items, it truly is antique vintage items. So they're bringing the old in with the new and they're making new things out of old things and new things to look old. And so that's the thought that inspired me for this next project. We're gonna take a, an old t-shirt and we're going to upcycle it into a vintage cabbage rose using the Aileen's Fabric Fusion Peel and Stick Tape. I'm choosing to use some recycled material from a leftover t-shirt to create my fabric rose. And I want this to be a no-sew project. So I'm going to use my Aileen's Fabric Fusion brand of fabric adhesive. I'm going to use the peel and stick tape to create the rose. I like this because it is permanent and it's also washable. The first step is to create a circle with your fabric. Now you can see that my circle is not very round and that really doesn't matter. And then what I've done is I've drawn a spiral on the inside of the circle. I've used a marker uh, just so that you can see it on camera. You'll want to do your spiral in pencil and that way you won't be able to see any of the lines or you can use a uh, vanishing ink. Then what you'll do is you'll take a pair of scissors and you'll cut your spiral all the way around to the center. 
And when you get that all cut, what you'll have is a piece of material that's kind of, um, kind of wavy here. It wants to curl because it's cut in a circle, but you're trying to make it in a straight line, just like this. And what we're going to do now is we're going to apply the adhesive to the edge of this fabric. And here's a little tip. I'm going to stick my scissors in there. That kind of holds my tape down as I apply the fabric here. And I'm just going to line the edge of the fabric up onto the tape there. It will pucker as you're um, applying it to the tape and actually that's a good thing because that'll create lots of nice little natural folds in your flower. Remember that um, you're trying to make something that is trying to curl into a straight line. So every once in a while you are going to have to bunch it up it's like that. But you're going to apply the tape on the edge until you've reached the end of your strip. And when you do, it will look like this one here. Nice long strip and I have the tape applied to the edge. Now I'm going to remove the backing as you've seen here and I'm not going to take the backing completely off. I'm just going to remove a little bit of that backing at a time because this tape is very sticky and it's just easier to manipulate if you do that. You can see it's sticking to my fingers. But you're going to come to the edge here and if you've ever worked with ribbon and made ribbon roses this is a very similar technique so I'm just curling and rolling that in and this is making the center of the flower. The only thing different or at least when I've made uh, ribbon roses is that you kind of twist the ribbon and in this case we're not going to be twisting the fabric. I'm just going to be rolling and bunching and gathering until I come to the end of my fabric. Now um, as you start to build layers upon layers, as you can see, I, I'm trying to keep my, um, the edge of my fabric, the edge that has the tape here, close to the middle of the flower. And that way um, it will open up real nice. And as you come to the end of where you've pulled off the, uh, the backing, then you can just extend that and pull more. So you're going to complete this, complete this by going to the end of the fabric. All right, before I finish my flower, I wanted to show you what it looks like from the back side. And as you can see, what I've basically done is I've recreated that spiral that we cut earlier. I've just wrapped the fabric around and around and around in a circle. And now I'm almost finished. I wanted to show you how I would finish this off. So I'm again, I'm just continuing that spiral to wrap. Now sometimes when you do these flowers, you get kind of a cone right here that can be kind of bulky, especially if you want it to lay flat for a hair accessory or um, maybe you're going to put this on a pin back. So you're just going to take your scissors, pretty sharp pair of scissors, and there's a lot of layers to cut through here, and you're just going to trim that off so that it is somewhat flat, just like I did there. The end of your fabric should have this little uh, base here. It's not a strip, it's more of a circle. And what you're going to do is you're just going to keep wrapping, and that little circle base is going to go right over that bunch that you just cut up, that little cone there, and it's going to secure it down like that. And I know it doesn't look like much now, but let's turn it over. And now what you're going to do is you're going to fluff up these layers and just kind of arrange them the way that you want. Get them to look all nice and pretty. Now I want to show you how to create the leaf. So you're going to start off with a rectangle and you're going to fold the top down and then the side in on a 45 diagonal and then in. So you're creating a point. This is almost like napkin folding. Then you're going to come back with your fabric fusion tape. Add a little strip there. Let me remove the backing. 
and you're going to fold in again right along that center line and press and in right along that center line and press and so the top portion of this is going to become your leaf like this if you're using a pattern fabric or a fabric that you've already colored, you can skip this step, but I thought it would be fun to give this flower some color. So I'm now I'm going to use the Tulip Soft Paints to do that. And I have watered these down so that they're very, very runny. And almost kind of like a, a dry brush or a tie-dye, I'm just going to rub my brush over the edges and give this flower some color. This is looking oh so pretty and it's got kind of a vintagey feel. Once your paint's dry, we can add all the elements and finish up this project. So again, using my double stick tape, I'm just going to tape on the leaf. And I've got a little bit of trim here. We'll put that on as well. If you're going to make this into a brooch, of course you'll want to tape on a pin back or you can add a little hair clasp and you've got a beautiful vintage rose. So just like I promised, a great no-sew project using the Aliens Fabric Fusion Peel and Stick Tape. Now think of all the different t-shirts that you have lying around that are doing you absolutely no good. Maybe there are different colors or patterns. Get those out because you have an endless array of opportunity. They'll, they'll all turn out looking so cool yet so different. You can also use this same technique with some pattern fabric or maybe you have a bunch of white t-shirts. Use the Tulip Fabric Spray Dye to color those and then go in with the fabric markers to create your own array of patterns. You're going to have so much fun with that technique. And then after you get done, you can use those to embellish your handbags, your flip-flops, your clothes, you can even use them in your hair. Hair accessories are really, really on trend. Maybe add a little feather because I've seen feathers in everybody's hair. So that is so fashion fashionable right now too. So lots of possibilities. Have fun with that technique and then be sure to email me photos because I'd love to see what you do with that. Now that is going to wrap up our fashion tour today. We've been so many places in such a short time. We've been to Chicago, Illinois to watch Juliana show us how to create that really cool bead with artistic wire. We have been to Charlotte, North Carolina to the Southern Women's Show as we made silk fabric scarves with the tulip fabric markers. And then we hopped that retro train to create that really cool vintage rose with upcycling t-shirts. So we've done so much. That's going to wrap up the show today. Before I go, I want to remind you of a few things. You can get all of the projects on today's show by visiting us on our website at coldacraft.com and lindapetersondesigns.com. While you're there, make sure you sign up for our newsletters because we'll drop those projects right into your inbox every Tuesday with step-by-step -step photos and written instructions. We want you to learn and we don't want you to miss a thing. And we'll even follow that up with our weekend edition newsletter on Friday. That way it gets your weekend off to a crafty start. Also, remember to join us on Facebook and like our pages at Cool the Craft and Linda Peterson Live. We want you to share with us. Give us your comments, your suggestions. We would love to hear what you want to see on future upcoming episodes. Now stay tuned at the end of the show is coming up that slideshow that I promised you with all the CHA designers showcasing their little fashion show and I don't want you to miss that. But for right now, I want you to keep creative and remember to keep living the creative life. I'll see you again real soon. <laughs>